So my why. Everybody has a why for why they do something. And I get asked this quite often, why do you keep doing this? And this industry is, has so many ups and downs, especially as a freelancer. And do you know, I have tried to quit this so many times. I have applied for so many jobs and tried to quit this, but it won't let me because I never get any of the jobs that I apply for. So that is the sign that I have to keep doing this. And my why is this was always my first baby. There was a time in my life when I started this in my early 20s and it was something that was an accident. I used to read my mum's Vogue magazines when I was a little girl and I would see these amazing pictures and I thought, I want to create those pictures. I thought, photography, no, not quite. I want to compile the look. And then that arrived, that took me to styling. So I then started interning at all of the magazines. Ugh, it wasn't quite right for me. Um, the magazine culture, very important, but it wasn't me. I didn't fit in there. I just wasn't cool enough to work in a magazine. So then I went off on a trip overseas to Milan in Italy and I did a course at Instituto Marangoni. So it was an amazing fashion college over in Milan. I was a big daggy dork when I was at that college, but that trip to Milan, I thought I wanted to be a fashion stylist. I wanted to emerge myself in the fashion industry, but the course was focused more on personal styling. So it was more focused on the everyday person. And I thought that really sucked because the everyday person was frumpy and boring and there was nothing exciting about that. It wasn't working with models or um, anything too glamorous. And at the end of my course, I stayed on for a little bit longer and I, assisted a stylist over there with personal shopping trips. And she gave me the English speaking tourists to shop with who were, how do I describe this? Not overly friendly and difficult clients. And I was thrown in the deep end. I was yelled at, um, the stuff they were buying was really boring and I thought, Oh my gosh, I've come all the way over here to do this. And then when the week ended, I was loving it. It was a challenge. And so I came back to Sydney and I quit my job and I put, we didn't have social media. I didn't have any money. I was broke as when I came back and I put a little ad on Gumtree and I found some random guy online who made me a really basic website with a male and a female stick figure and I did an image consultant training course and I was told that I was too young to do it and I would never be taken seriously. Uh, I still did it. And there was a woman who I tried to find her. Her name was Alison, who was an image consultant. And I reached out to her. I'd reached out to multiple people who said to me, no, oh no, why would we help you? You'll just be a competitor. Oh no, we don't have time. We're not sharing our IP with you. No, it, it was so unfriendly. And I picked up the phone and I was just about at the end of my rope with it. And she said to me, I'm actually happy for you to come over and sit in on my sessions. She gave me confidence. She showed me how she actually, the practical, how to do it, how to run a session with a client. And she helped me. She gave me everything she knew and she helped me. And it was her that actually really got me off and started. And then there was no stopping me. You know, friends were getting married. Um, so I didn't have much of a social life because they were with their boyfriends. I was, you know, I moved out, I was flatting. So I worked, I worked every function, every event, every lunch, everywhere I went, I spoke to people about what I did. And I built up my business and my networks organically. And this gave me something that nothing else could give me. It gave me a sense of purpose and essentially it formed a part of who I am and it is a part of me. And I will never completely quit this because it's, it's a part of me. It is who I am 
And I think the ability to connect with people, the ability to make a difference, the ability to reach out and, um, you know, really be able to access someone's vulnerabilities and, and allow them to feel comfortable in the process. And that feeling, there is nothing like that. When you get that email on a Saturday night saying, you've made such a difference. When you get that client's husband secretly ringing you or, or wife or partner or brother or sister, whoever it might be ringing you saying, I can't tell you what you've done for this person in my life. And you've just really made them understand how beautiful they are. And you've made them really acknowledge that. And that is why I do this. I take text messages from men on a Saturday night asking me what to wear on their dates because I just get a kick out of it. And my husband is like, who are you messaging? And I'm like, oh, it's Matthew because I want to help him. And my husband's, my phone goes crazy with mail text messages, you know, pictures of them in there. <laughs> you know, you'd think it was dodgy if you didn't know what I did, but you know, Mick just goes, oh yeah, it's just another, you know, another client text message. And I love it. Like, I love it. It's a part of me and it's a part of what I do. And I don't mind being disturbed. And I think that is my why, because I get just as much out of it as I hope the majority of my clients get out of working with me.